Hello and welcome back to part 6 of my BMW N55 engine rebuild project that I've been working on for the past few weeks. By the end of this video this engine is finally starting to look like a real engine and not just a pile of parts around a naked block. I can almost hear this engine start up for the first time and purr with all the new parts or at least I hope it will. In today's video I'm replacing the valve cover gasket and installing the valve cover itself as well as replacing the oil pan gasket and installing a new to me oil pan. More on that later. If you'd like this project to succeed, don't forget to hit that like button for me and of course for the YouTube algorithm. And now back to the project. I won't be going into details on how to get to this stage as I've shown these steps in my engine removal video. I suggest you watch that video for more details on which parts to remove to get to the valve cover. Basically you'll remove the intake housing, fan cowl and move the coolant expansion tank to the side. There's no real need to disconnect it. Then move the air duct that feeds the turbocharger and most of the other stuff is now out of the way. You'll just have to remove the gas pressure lines after disconnecting the battery, of course, and any vacuum and electrical connections on top of the valve cover. Now the valve cover can be unbolted. If you're reusing it, make sure to unbolt all 26 bolts in the correct sequence and remember that these bolts are attached to the cover itself and will not peacefully come out past the plastic part, so don't force it. With the valve cover removed, we can inspect the surfaces on the cylinder head and remove any bigger debris with a plastic razor and use scotch bright pads for anything that's remaining. The valve cover itself has four different gaskets that should be replaced each time the cover is removed to avoid any oil leaks. Replacing them is very easy. Remove the old stuff, clean out the channels of any dirt and oil, insert new gaskets and we're ready to go back on the cylinder head. In my case, I had to install the spark plug housing, which came off during the rebuild. With everything ready to go, the cover simply can be lowered, making sure everything is aligned and torqued to spec. Torquing these bolts to spec and in the correct order is probably the most important step as this plastic cover can easily warp or even crack if not done correctly. Refer to the diagram for the correct sequence and then hand tight or use a power drill on the lowest settings on all of these screws. For round two, each one gets eight and a half newton meters in the same order. Do not go back on the first one to check torque or retorque them again. They have to be done in that order and then just left alone. If all went well, simply reassemble whatever you have taken apart to get here and enjoy your new valve cover gasket. Now onto the oil pan gasket and install. As I mentioned earlier, I had to get a new oil pan as the engine I'm rebuilding is from a BMW X5 and it's going into a BMW 335, so the oil pan and the pickup tubes are different on these cars. This is one of the more complicated to do at home jobs if you don't have an engine out, but it is possible if you drop the front axle support and remove the front differential, as well as the power steering pump. With correct access, this is a simple job, just like the valve cover. Just as before, cleaning all of the surfaces is very important to prevent leaks and then we can drop the gasket on the top of the engine block. In this case, there are no guides, so you have to be very careful when installing the new gasket, as it will move around if you're not careful. It took me two tries before I got it perfect and I had really good access. So I imagine it's a little bit harder while you're working under the car. I'm just aligning the gasket as I'm lifting the oil pan slightly. Pretty much perfect, but I want it to be perfect perfect. With the gasket aligned and the oil pan sitting on top, we can insert the new aluminum bolts in a couple of spots and screw them in by a few threads. Now comes the important part. If the engine is out, you're supposed to use an alignment tool to make sure the oil pan is perfectly aligned with the block. If the transmission is still attached, you don't really have to worry about it as it will align itself to the bell housing. Here's what I did. All right, I think that's pretty much on the money right there. Let's go around a little bit. You're looking straight down, it looks really good. So I'm gonna put my new bolts in and then I'll adjust to make sure it's perfectly lined up here as well. Because I know when you're installing uh, the oil pan without it being in the car, the transmission is not there to align it, so we have to make sure it's perfectly aligned. Uh, there are special tools that you can install in here that's going to level this out. 
I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna put the bolts in so it doesn't move anywhere. Not tight, of course, just very, very loose. And then I'll use like a straight edge or something to make sure it's level. And here's the kit of bolts. There's a lot of them. We're gonna make sure that they go where they're supposed to go and don't mix them up. Here's a little installation paper that came with it. It gives you the length of the bolts, the quantity, and then the initial torque as well as the torque angle. So that's pretty useful. And if any of you remember or have seen my original teardown video, here's my little cheat sheet so I don't have to actually look it up every time I'm looking at a bolt. I know exactly where they go, their length, and everything else. So I do recommend doing this if you're like me. People left so many comments saying, oh, you can't reuse the aluminum bolts. That wasn't the point, guys. The point was, now I know where the bolts go. So I know that these three long ones will go in right here, right? It's all nicely spaced out and easy to understand. Sweet. As you can see, they're pretty close in length. There's only three that are slightly shorter and we have the much, much longer ones. All right, so the really long ones go in here. So we're gonna put three in here. All right. Then one of the shorter ones goes in here. Then another, the other two shorter ones go on this side. So you skip two and then you go in here. And then these two long ones go right there. Then hand tight a few screws to keep it from moving around and check your alignment. Make sure everything is perfect and lined up before you torque them down. All screws in the oil pan are torqued to 8 newton meters and then 90 degree rotation for the short ones and 180 degree of rotation on the long ones. Alright, so I just set it to zero. Now I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. right there, as you can see, 180. So that was just an example to show you how to use this tool on the outer bolts. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is kind of start in the middle and then work myself out, kind of in a circular motion more or less. Um, yeah, get that done. I will mark those bolts that it's been rotated with a marker so I know which one have been tightened because that's kind of important. Well, look at my engine now, looking all spiffy with all the new gaskets and ready for more parts. Thank you so much for watching part 6 of the BMW N55 engine rebuild project, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next part, where we install the front and rear crankshaft seals, install the injectors, the exhaust manifold, and drop the engine back in the car. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of the progress so far, and if you'd like to follow the project, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.